God bless you, saints of God. God bless you on this great Lord's Day. What a wonderful day it is to be in the Lord. Amen. What a wonderful day to proclaim the name of Jesus Christ. What a wonderful, wonderful day uh, to call on his name and to give him glory, honor, and praise. Welcome to the Providence Church of God in Christ. Welcome into the sanctuary tonight. Amen. For our By the Book Bible Study. Amen. I just want to exhort you tonight to pace yourself. Just want to encourage you with those two simple words, pace yourself. And if I can just be a little bit transparent tonight, I want to let you know that uh, uh, things have been a little bit arduous uh, these past couple of months and really these past couple of years as we have tried to manage and uh, try to maintain who we are. What I discovered um, in reflecting back over this time uh, is that I have been trying to um, manage independently. I don't know about you, maybe that's the case for you. Uh, you have gotten to that place and to that point where uh, at times you've tried to do what came naturally instead of spiritually. And I don't know if you're there right now, but sometimes we relapse back into what worked in yesteryear instead of staying in the moment with God, uh, seeing things through. And so what happened is I knowingly but unknowingly began drawing from who I was as a Newsom or as Marshall or as, you know, just a, a man, uh, which uh, all of those things is what uh, allowed me to remain myself and not God's child. And we always know that uh, the child of the king operates under different orders than the ordinary human being. Yes, you still have to brush your teeth, you still have to comb your hair and uh, do everything else necessary, you still have to eat every day and you still have to get along with life, but sometimes when we become uh, exhausted and tired and weary and uh, when we've been going for so long, amen, and pushing hard and trying to keep other people uplifted and encouraged, sometimes we run out. Sometimes we uh, just don't get the rest that we need. And I'll be a little bit transparent tonight if you don't hold it against me. Uh, having recently contracted uh, COVID, tested positive for it, um, I discovered that the recovery from COVID is taking a whole lot longer than it did when I contracted the virus in 2020. Uh, this time around, even after being vaccinated, it's taking a longer time to get my energy and strength and mojo and get up uh, back uh, in line with where it was uh, months and even years ago. And it just seems like uh, everything comes in on you at once. Uh, by the time you finish dealing with one situation, another one pops up. By the time you try to recover, from one situation, two more uh, seem to inundate your life. And um, I'm, I'm not any different from anyone else. I, I, I did the natural human thing and tried to tell myself, you can make it, you can do it, 
you're going to make it. And uh, that just worked for a little while and it didn't really seem to work long term. And then emotionally, you become uh, more and more tired. And when you become emotionally drained, you're not as nice as you once were. You're not as cordial and accommodating. And maybe, maybe this is not you. I'm just testifying for me tonight. Uh, may, maybe you're on point all the time. Maybe you're able to handle the stresses of life without there being a change in your personality. But I noticed that as I became more and more emotionally drained, I became more and more distant. I became more and more disconnected emotionally from things that I should have reinforced and made better. And then spiritually, uh, began to run on fumes. Yes, I was still praying. Yes, I was still reading the word. Yes, I was still attending regular church services. During this entire pandemic, I was looking back at the role and we missed three Sundays of in-person attendance during the whole pandemic. But this latest Omicron, which is more transmissible has uh, put us in a place where we are uh, putting a pause in our services until the first Sunday in February. And part of that is that we don't want to get anyone sick. We don't want to get anyone um, in, a, uh, in harm's way. And so we're not uh, ignorant of what's going on in society. We're just taking an extra measure of precaution. Let me also say that um, this Omicron, uh, this time around when I contracted COVID, I could not get it together. And I know that some of you are saying, well, pastor, you shouldn't be saying this. You shouldn't be uh, putting this information out there. Well, uh, it's probably what you're going through or have gone through or gonna go through, but um, I have uh, a, uh, a position to help somebody. And I'm, I'm never trying to bring attention to myself, but trying to help somebody to deal with the issues of life not only having, have, having to deal with uh, COVID, but also having to deal with the rest of life, deal with loss and sickness in others and uh, dealing with the grief that comes with unexpected passing of loved ones. Uh, all of this comes in and then there is the uh, economy that's not rebounding like it should. So uh, the grocery store prices are higher. The uh, gas prices are higher. All of this comes in and tries to uh, bring a damper. And then we've got winter. Uh, there is a, a condition called SAD, S-A-D, Seasonal Affective Disorder. In the winter time, there's not as much sunshine. There's not as much uh, daylight. Uh, the daylight times are shorter. The night times are longer. And that affects us in an adverse way. And so uh, what the Spirit highlighted to me was that the same things that I'm going through as a called, ordained pastor, elder, preacher, brother, saint, is what everybody else is dealing with to a certain degree. Some have it worse. Some have it better. And I'm glad, and as I pointed out a couple of weeks ago, I'm so glad that not everybody is down at the same time, but that God keeps us balanced. He allows some of us to be up while some of us are down. And then he allows us to 
uh, regain our composure and get it together again. Amen. Others are dealing with pandemic exhaustion. Others are dealing with overwhelming circumstances. Others are dealing with massive grief. And others are dealing with what appears to be a mental checkout. We have just uh, put ourselves, and the body has a natural way of doing it, it's putting ourselves in a state of shock in order to preserve what we have, in order to not lose any more of who we are. And so the body uh, really recluses uh, to a path of least resistance. Uh, that's why when things like this happen, we don't want to get up and comb our hair. We don't want to brush our teeth. We don't want to take a bath. We just want to lay around until things get better. Sometimes that takes weeks and months to get better. But there's other fallout uh, when we encounter such conditions. Uh, the other fallout is depression, and then there is low energy, a lack of drive. We just don't have the get up and go like we used to. we uh, going through the motions. We're just uh, doing what's routine, not doing anything extra. And it has little to do with money. It has very little to do with uh, social status. It has little to do with popularity or our standing in the community. But what we're dealing with comes from a place that we've got to address, comes from a place where we've got to pace ourselves. We used to run real hard and real fast, but now we've got to pace ourselves so that we can preserve energy and preserve resources in order to not only make it through it, but have strength when the Lord blesses again, when the Lord fuels the fire again. And so in the midst of all of this that we go through and all of this that we encounter and all of this that we deal with, we still have to chase hard after the heart of God. We have to be present in the moment with God. We have to get in God's face. Tell him all about what's going on within. Tell him how you're feeling about it. Understand that God can handle it. And to be, to be truthful with you, God's the only one that can handle it and help with it. You may be able to give me some money, but money is not really my issue. You may be able to uh, take me out to a nice dinner, but food is not my issue. And what I discovered in the midst of all that I was going through, and I hope this is helping somebody. If it is, please just say, thank you, Lord, uh, for the help. Uh, I, I, I came to realize that God was right there with me through it all. God had not abandoned me, but uh, God was instrumental in sustaining me throughout the entire process. Sometimes we can't see the help of God uh, because of the hindrances that seem to uh, call our attention. And so then the word of the Lord came to me out of Proverbs uh, the third chapter, verses five and six, the word of God came to me as a reminder and it came to me as a reviver. It came to me as a refreshing from the Lord. Hallelujah. And that Proverbs three, five and six says, trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. It's what we always knew, uh, but overwhelming circumstances seem to cloud our memory. 
We always knew to trust in the Lord, not just with the things we think he can handle, but trust in the Lord with all our heart and lean not to our own understanding, but in all of our ways to acknowledge him and the blessing and the promise is that he shall direct our paths. Hallelujah. Much of the word is simply multiple reminders uh, of some key aspects and principles that need to be reinforced within us. And so there are two basic premises here tonight. Trust in the Lord. Trust in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Trust. Because only the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost know the best way through, the best way out, the best way over. So why would we substitute any other thing for the real thing, that being the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And then it also teaches us to abandon self, abandon our ideologies, abandon our judgments, abandon our uh, ways, because our ways don't lead to anything profitable and successful and beneficial. And so we, we've got to abandon our carnality, we've got to abandon sin, got to abandon our selfishness, our logical way of doing things, our moral way of handling life, our uh, sequential, you know, if this, then that. We've got to abandon self, abandon the rules, because the rules don't always pay off. And so, uh, yet we are tempted every day to abandon God and trust in self, especially when it gets rough. We're tempted to just abandon what we know from the word, abandon what we have experienced in God, abandon what the Lord has already done to go back to something that never worked in the first place. And so, saints of God, we've got to pace ourselves. Why is the temptation to abandon the things of God and adopt the things of self? Well, it's a very simple, easy reason uh, that we already know. We want, we are tempted to abandon God and trust in self because we are comfortable in control. Mm. We're comfortable with how we run our lives. We're comfortable with who we have in our space. We're comfortable with how we uh, deal with life. We're comfortable with the money that we make. We don't want to make less. We're comfortable with where we live. We don't want to go back to the ghetto. We're comfortable being around the people that think like us, act like us, look like us. Mm -hmm. We're comfortable. Can I go a little further? In short, we still have a sinful aspect of us as a result of Eve and Adam eating of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil to be our own God. That's really what it's about. We have an aspect of us that wants to be in total control so that we can be our own God. The problem with that is that we own nothing, we have nothing, we can do nothing, and we are nothing without the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Uh, Lord have mercy consequence of trying to be our own God is that we keep getting disappointed every single time. We continue to be disappointed 
when we try to be in control of our own destiny, our own future, and our own present. We try to get ahead of God and get put back in our place every single time. We run hard in the beginning, but then we end up dropping back and almost dropping out because if it didn't work before, it's not going to work again. Only what we do for Christ lasts. Only what we do for the Lord is profitable. Only what we do for the Lord is helpful and blesses us. And so I want to give you three things tonight in dealing with pace yourself. Three very simple things. Those things are be consistent, number one. Be persistent, number two. And be resistant, number three. Come on, put that in the comments for me tonight. Be consistent, be persistent, be resistant. I want to take you to Isaiah, the 40th chapter, just for a few minutes. Isaiah, the 40th chapter, and uh, this Isaiah 40 is really a parallel and prophetic utterance of the New Testament. Uh, begins in this 40th chapter uh, being the, the second half of the book of Isaiah. The first half of the book deals with a lot of woes. But the second half of the book deals with blessings. Mm -hmm. Blessings. And it's really a uh, somewhat of a metaphor for Old Testament, New Testament. Uh, the uh, Old Testament law, the New Testament grace, it's really a, 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 a parallel in this book of Isaiah. In verse number three, and I'll show you how it connects to New Testament, in verse number three of Isaiah 40, the word of the Lord says, the voice of him that crieth in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Well, let's pick it up in Matthew, the third chapter verses 1 through 3, to give us a little bit of a background. The Bible says in Matthew 3, 1 through 3, In those days came John the Baptist, preaching in the wilderness of Judea, and saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is he that was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make straight, make his paths straight. That's what the word of the Lord says in Matthew 3, 1 through 3. And so we see a parallel of uh, Isaiah 40, the beginning of the new covenant. And at the end of Isaiah, we see a reference to Revelation. So it ties it in. Uh, just very well. But as we look down further in this text, we see in verse number 10, the Bible says, Behold, the Lord God will come with strong hand, and his arm shall rule for him. Behold, his reward is with him, and his work before him. Uh, further explanation or introduction of Jesus the Christ. Verse number 27, why sayest thou, O Jacob, and speakest, O Israel, my way is hid from the Lord, and my judgment is passed over from my God? Listen, know that we are not forgotten or forsaken, though it feels that way sometimes. And it was at this point in moving from the first half of Isaiah to the second half of Isaiah that he sensed that the people had felt forgotten, forsaken, and passed over by God. Hallelujah. 
We must note that the Lord prepared for this day in which we are living in. Not only that, but the Lord prepared the day for us and prepared us for the day. Hmm. Hallelujah. God prepared to meet every need of every believer in this day in which we live. Hallelujah. Understand that we knew the love of God before we knew the God of love. While we were yet sinners, while we were yet out there doing our thing, the Lord was looking out for us. The Lord was preparing us for a day when our names would be written in the Lamb's book of life. The feeling of abandonment is just that. It's feeling. But there is no truth in being abandoned by God. God is sustaining us, even in this very moment, uh, this day, this night that we're in, God is sustaining us. Do you realize, well, you probably don't, how much God is keeping out of your life? <laughs> Do you realize how close you came to a fatal accident today? How close you came to uh, someone uh, destroying your life and livelihood? But the Lord, continues to watch out for us. The Lord continues to sustain us. The Lord continues to keep our minds. He continues to keep our heart. He continues to keep us together. Ah, yes, Lord, hallelujah. I thank God tonight that God has not abandoned his creation. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We're in good hands with God, and I want to remind you to stay in the hands of God. Don't be lured out of the ark of safety by that which the Lord delivered us from in order to save us. There is nothing to go back to. Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior. Every need we have is met in Christ. Don't let the feeling overwhelm, overshadow what you know to be the truth that is in God's word. The rest of the chapter of Isaiah 40, beginning at verse 28, is really rather self-explanatory. The word of the Lord says, has thou not known, has thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, feigneth not, neither is weary. There is no searching of his understanding. Our God, somebody say our God, our God has a proven track record of success. Our God never fails. Our God is never silent. Our God is never docile. Our God is never absent. Our God is always in place. Thanks be to God. Our God has a proven track record of success. Let me remind you also, the devil has a proven track record of failure. So don't allow the temptation of the enemy to pull you back into a place where there's failure after failure after failure. Hallelujah. Stay with God. He doesn't give out. He never tires and he never runs out. The Bible says, my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory, by Christ Jesus. Let me move on. Verse number 29 of Isaiah 40. The Bible says, He giveth power to the faint, and to them that have no might, he increaseth strength. How kind of God to bless us. 
How kind of God to empower us. How kind of God to strengthen us. Hallelujah. You may be down, but you're not out. Amen. You may be tired. You might even be weary. Uh, but just call on the Lord, and he'll give you the strength that you need. He'll give you the power to overcome. He'll give you what's necessary to make it. Just seek him. Ask him. Knock on the door of his heart. Hallelujah. Because the Bible says, he that asketh, receiveth. He that seeketh, findeth. He that knocketh, the door is open to him. And so you have heaven at your disposal. Ah, Lord have mercy. But pace yourself. Don't burn out. Don't give out. Pace yourself. Stay in there with God. Amen. You may go down, but uh, don't stay down. You may, uh, hallelujah, you may slack off, but don't stop. Don't quit. Don't drop out. Amen. Stick and stay with God. Pace yourself so that you're able to hold out until the very end. Hallelujah. It is the Lord who strengthens the inner man that we are sustained under pressure. It is the Lord who strengthens the inner man against all that the enemy comes at us with. It is the Lord who strengthens the inner man so that we can handle the griefs, the griefs of life. It is the Lord who strengthens the inner man to deal with the issues of life. Verse 30. Even the youths shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. In the last verse of Isaiah 40. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Lord have mercy. I wish I could demonstrate waiting on God. We think it's just sitting there uh, in expectation waiting for something to happen. But no, 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 no. When this scripture talks about they that wait upon the Lord... It's just like a waiter in a fine dining restaurant that has that white tile over, draped over his arm, uh-huh, waiting on the customer. They that wait upon the Lord, they that attend to the Lord's business, they that attend to the Lord's desires, they that attend to the word of God, they that attend in prayer, they that attend in service to the Lord shall renew their strength. Hallelujah. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Pace yourself. What this really says is if you can't fly as an eagle, then run. If you can't run, then walk. Just don't give up. Don't give out. Don't quit. Stay in there with God. Stay in the face of God. Stay in the word of God. Stay in the house of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Don't stop. Don't quit. Let me tell you this and I'm going to close for tonight. Years ago I was working alongside my father-in-law, uh, Deacon Louis Coe Wilson. And uh, we were moving some rocks, I believe, and um, I was in my prime at the time, and uh, Deacon Wilson is 40 years my senior. And so as we were moving these rocks, I went in hard and heavy. But he went in consistent and steady. I soon found myself tired. He outworked me that day, but I learned a very valuable lesson. Pace yourself. You may be bigger. You may be better. You may be stronger. You may be all of this and all of that, but pace yourself. 
Hallelujah. Saints of God, stick and stay with God. Through the good, through the bad, through the ugly, stick and stay with God. Move when he moves. Don't move when he doesn't say move. How will we know when to do? How will we know what to do? How will we know where to do? By following his lead. And so let me remind you again, be consistent, be persistent, be resistant. Be consistent, stay with God. Don't walk ahead of him and don't lag behind him. Stay with God. Be consistent in your living, consistent in your giving, consistent in your loving, consistent in every aspect of kingdom relationship. And then number two, be persistent. Be persistent. Weather every storm that you're in. How do we weather the storm? By Staying in the face of God. We weather the storm by continuing to praise him. By continuing to worship him. By keeping our focus on him and not on everything that's going on around us. So be consistent. Be persistent. Press through those troubled times. And the Lord will bring you up and bring you out. Hallelujah. And then lastly, be resistant. Be sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Saints of God, we need the indwelling of the Holy Ghost in order to be resistant to the whims, ways, and wickedness of this world. We need the Holy Ghost abiding on the inside so that we can resist stinking thinking, so that we can resist depression, so that we can resist oppression, so that we can resist outside negative and sinful influence. We need the Holy Ghost on the inside to resist temptation. And we need the Holy Ghost to resist the enemy of our souls. James 4 and 7, you know it well. Submit yourselves therefore unto God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Submit, resist, he flees. Maintain your focus on God. Pace yourself. This is a wicked and evil day. This is a difficult time in the history of America and the world. There are no easy answers. But I pray that I've given you something tonight to help you deal with the difficulties of life. Pace yourself. Be consistent. Be persistent. Be resistant. Songwriter, as we heard tonight, John P. Key said, Lord, help me to hold out. Lord, help me to hold out. We need the help of the Lord to do the will of the Lord. We need the help of the Lord to remain consistent, persistent, and resistant. We need the help of the Lord to establish a pace of life that gets us through life without throwing in the towel, without contemplating giving up. The Bible says to us in Galatians 6 and 9, you know it well, and let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Then verse 10 says, as we therefore have opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially to those that are of the household of faith. Saints of God, pace yourself. Stick and stay with God. Accept no substitute. Get the real thing. Get the real Holy Ghost. Get the real Jesus. Walk in him. Love on him, live for him. Let us pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we come before you now. We thank you, we love you, we bless you, we honor you, O oh God, for the great and wonderful things that you've done, for the great and wonderful God that you are. Thank you for being our God. 
Thank you for being our Lord of Lords. Thank you for being our King of Kings. God, we thank you tonight for sustaining us in the midst of all that we deal with, all that we go through, all that we encounter. Thank you for upholding us with your right hand. We thank you, God, for sending Jesus Christ to die on Calvary's cross, that we might have a right to the tree of life. God, help us in our down times. Help us in our despondency. Help us, Lord, in those times when it just seems overwhelming. It seems like we just can't take it anymore. Help us. Give us, God, the patience we need. Give us the strength. Give us that overcoming power that we may not make a mess of this life that you've called us to. Lord, we give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor. In the mighty and matchless name of Jesus Christ, thank you, God. Amen and amen. God bless you tonight, saints of God. Join us the next time for a word from the Lord. Remember, pace yourself. Be consistent. Be persistent. Be resistant. God bless you.
Come on. All the people on the side, come on. Come on. 